So now we have some understanding of how the this function mt mt looks like, but uh, we we have just defined one process mt based on our uh, xi's and z case we can actually define more random processes, right? So let's see what all we can discuss, what can we can define. So okay, before we do that, some properties. Let's take Z m of t. So Z subscripted by m of t. So this m of t we know is a integer value, right? So what I'm looking at is a renewal happening at the for the m tth time or m tth renewal. Okay. So so given a t, you know that mt is going to denote the number of renewals that has happened in the 0 t interval, okay. And if you look at z of mt, so what is this? This basically now I am looking, so z t is a z, 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 z k is a sequence of random variables, right. Now mt is a random variable. I can treat this as a random time and now I am asking the value of z at this random time m of t, right. Now my claim is this quantity is going to be less than or equals to t. Why is that? So what we are doing is m of t by our definition told me included all the renewals that has happened before time t, right? So naturally any renewal that has happened before t must have happened before time t, right? So because of that this property is natural. When you are going to look at m of t renewal of your process that then m of t renewal should have happened before time t. So just go back and try to convince yourself all these properties. Now similarly what about m of t plus 1 greater than or equals to or equals to t or strictly greater than. It has to be greater than t, right? Why is that? Because by definition m of t has included all the renewals that has happened till time t. If you are looking at the one more renewal that better have happened after time t, right? So that is why this property holds. And one more property is that is we are going to exploit this. These two events, okay, maybe let me write these two sets. They are the same. Why is that? Why is that? So we are saying that suppose let's say this event implies. Let's first say this event is a subset of this. Suppose Z n is less than or equals to t. What does this mean? The nth renewal has happened before time t, right? Now if nth renewal has happened before time t, then better be like m t should be larger than or at least equal to n, right? Because if, if you already know Z of oh, nth renewal has happened before t, maybe there could have been possibly more event a renewals have happened just before t. So because of that mt has to be at least n or more, okay. So we know that this event is included here. 
but what about the other case? Suppose if you know that m of t is going to be greater than or equals to n, that means in the interval 0 to t, at least n renewals have happened, okay? Then it must be the case that the nth renewals must have happened before time t, right? Nth renewals must have happened before time t. Because of that, this is also included in this. So, we can, now it is clear that uh, these are the same sets. If not clear, just again go and convince yourself, okay? So, these are some property which we will exploit in, in coming up with some uh, interesting results. Okay, now define an another process. I am called residual lifetime. So, I am going to define a process y t now capital Y of t that is defined for every t in this format z of subscript subscript z of m t plus 1 minus t. So, what is actually capturing? So, before we try to understand what this is actually capturing, let us try to draw how this function looks like. Okay, this is t and let us see, let us see what is this y t. So, at t equals to 0, let us say take m of t to be 0. So, at t equals to 0, what is this? It is z 1, right, minus t. So, t is 0. That means, at time 0, this is z 1, but z 1 we know same as x 1 by definition. z 1 is same as x 1. So, at time 0, so this quantity is z1 or this is same as x1, okay. And now, let us increase t, okay. As I increase t, at some point, the second renewal will also be included, right? And then as I increase this t, so, 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 as I increase this t, till some point, this guy m of t is going to remain 0 only, right? After that, it is going to increase to index 1, okay? Let us say for time being, it is not going to increase. So, in that case, this guy is going to be z1 and now there is a minus subtracting time here. What is this going to happen? As t increase, it will be decreasing. It will be decreasing till what time? Till first arrival can happen, right? And what is that? Can x1, right? At, at x1, uh, arrival has happened. So, because of that, this guy suddenly becomes 1 now. It was 0 so far. And now it is z2 right and what is this now z2 and in the z2 you are uh, what is this t t is already x1 right it has taken already one so what is this jump in this case is is it going to jump at this point what is this jump it is going to be the amount of x2 once it jumps to x2, after that this guy is not immediately going to make 3, right? It remains at 1 till some point, but this guy is continuing to increase, right? So, it is going to pull it down and uh, what this guy is going to pull down to? It is going to get to 0.
So this guy at this point, till this point, this is already x1. Now let us say I, I take it up to x2 here. That time this guy is already. So when I take it from, okay, let us say I increase it by amount x2 here. So then this guy becomes x1 plus x2, right? But x1 plus x2 is z2 actually. So this has made it become 0. So this height here and this height, they are the same. So it is falling down to 0 at what right? At unit negative right, right? So you can just uh, keep on plotting like this. So now based on this, what you can see, now again coming back to my battery, when I charged it, its battery is full, whatever its inherent life was that time. As the time process, its life goes to 0. So that is why we are going to, at any time t, you take an arbitrary time t, this process is going to tell how much more time, how much time is residual time is left in that before that guy dies. So yt, the function yt at any time t gives me that time remaining before a next interval happens or in the battery example case, the time before the battery gets discharged. So till this point you are clear, when x1, at when t equals to x1, okay, not there. So better to write this function. So let us take t equals to x1. So t equals to x1, that is x1 is basically z1, right? So z1 is definitely less than or equals to z1. So k is included in that and m of t becomes 1 right at this point. So at this point, what is this? Z of 1 plus 1. So this is exactly Z2 at this point. Suddenly at this point, it has become X2. Why? Because this X is already X1 and this guy is, so okay, Y of at T1 is equals to Z2 minus T1, but T1 we have taken to be X1, right? So this is going to be uh, Z2, I know it is X1 plus X2 minus X1, this is X2. But once I come here, till my T increases by amount X2, my K value of M of T is not going to change, right? So till this time, this guy is going to remain Z2, but this guy is increasing. So it is going to pull it down, right? But suddenly, when you have increased till X2, then your T becomes X1 plus X2, which is Z2. So this will make your M of T, 2 it will make. So because of that, now you become Z3, right? So Z3, but T is, so at time Z2, you have, this becomes Z2 plus 1 minus Z2, right? But this is X1 plus X2 plus X3 minus Z1, X1 minus X2. So this is suddenly here. X3 jump and then it is going to going to go down to 0. So like that. So basically this function is y of t is going to capture. So if you just say, okay, tell me what is the time. If at this time, this function defines how much more life is remaining. That is why it is called residual lifetime. So what is, so if I am going to just take y to be 
z k here at time t i am going to substitute z k what do you expect this value to be? So, when I had so this duration is what basically z 1 right z 1 and x 1 are the same at this point this value happened to be x 2 right and uh, so okay maybe just let us write this z 1 and what happens that y equals to z 2 that is at this point it has become x 3. So, in general based on this can I write y of z k is equals to x k plus 1 and how what about y z k minus just before the k level. So, what is happening just before the jumps? It is 0, right? This point is going to be 0, this is going to be for all k. It will be greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So, now let us define another process. Okay. This is called edge process. ut I am going to define as t minus z of m of t. Okay, so, I have already argued that z of m t is going to be less than or equals to t right because of this is this quantity is going to be positive or non negative it is going to be non negative right because z of m t is going to be always less than or equals to t. So, let us plot this. So, at time t equals to 0, m of t let us take it as 0 and uh, z of 0 let us take it 0 because z of z process is defined for k greater than or equals to 1 right. So, for z of 0 let us take it as 0. So, at time t equals to 0 what is its value? It is going to be 0 and as I increase t what is happening? Right this guy is not going to suddenly change it is going to remain there for some time, but this guy t is increasing and it is increasing. T increasing till what time? At some point when t I take it to be x 1 suddenly this guy becomes z 1 right. At z 1 at t is also z 1. So, it falls to 0. What is this guy? This guy here distance x 1 and what is this value? Y u t here right? It has also increased by x t amount right? Because till when it is increasing this guy part was 0. So, it was like u t equals to t that was kind of linearly increasing. This is also of the same height. Okay, now, it has fallen 0 at t equals to x 1. Now, after that if I go t to just beyond x 1 this guy is not going to suddenly change it is going to still remain x 1, but this guy t is now increasing from x 1. So, what do you expect? It is increasing till what point x 2 then So, this is with slope 1, slope 1 and so was here. So, can you now see why it is called age process? 
so age always increases right let's say you have replaced your battery at this time and uh, you take some time at this point so what it basically tells you is so it basically if you just look at this time t and it has so happened that you have basically replaced your battery at this point your age has at this point is this much see like when so the the thing here the 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 because i am subtracting this amount this is basically capturing that i have renewed replaced the battery so even though i am looking at this time i am not counting age from this point i am counting the age from the point where it has been replaced or recharged right so and that part is uh, trying to get rid of the things uh, till that it only rec uh, capturing what is the time since the battery has been replaced okay so so these are these processes this age process residual process they try to help us understand okay how frequently maybe if i can characterize these processes for my system then they will tell us how frequently my component is going to fail even if i replace them uh, and uh, that will tell us how quickly i should take it for repair so so if i know this this is going to fail with this kind of behavior i can come up with a criteria okay before this guy fails i will make sure that i will do some maintenance work so that even that guy so so when things fail you are in loss right maybe like if you have a company or uh, something if some component there fails your machine is not working you are not basically earning money right so what you want is your uh, you don't want your machine or your uh, process to stop so if you kind of analyze and anticipate when it is likely going to uh, survive or what is the quality of my component then before it gets bad you can plan a scheduled repair process and uh, make it continue to work without interruptions okay are kyun chahiye this can be next one can be just list these are realizations right like you charged it and uh, yeah, it worked for longer time for some reason and next time and it become bad and when you again charged it maybe it become bad again okay okay so so our basically the the process the renewal process we have defined right it was iid process for the point n greater than or equals to 2 so to describe all the points after n greater than or equals to 2 i just have to specify one distribution and uh, the first cycle could have different distribution so if i just specify you the distribution of the first cycle so i am going to interchangeably use cycles and renewals now like when a renewal happens i am going to call it as one cycle completed okay so if i specify the distribution of the first cycle and the distribution of the second cycle that's enough right that completely specifies my renewal process here because that is that only two things i know i i knew because these are independent process and for kn greater than or equals to 2 this is all iid but now suppose i have this information can i compute the quantities of my interests for example can i compute the distribution of my zis can i compute my distribution of my mt right and can i compute the expected value of my mt okay so let's see how can we do that suppose a is cdf of x1 and uh, 
एफ फेस सी डी एफ ऑफ एक्स टू सो इफ आई गिव दिस टू सी डी एफ इज इट एनफ फॉर टू कैरेक्टराइज माई रिन्यूअल प्रोसेस राइट सो द फर्स्ट साइकिल इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एज एक्स वन एंड द सब्सिक्वेंट्स आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एज पर एक्स टू ना इफ आई एम गोइंग टू कैप्चर वॉट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट जेड वन वार इक्वल्स टू टी वॉट इज दिस गोइंग टू बी so that can be computed this is nothing but the cdf of x1 right because that one is same as x1 so this is simply a of t okay now what about probability of z2 greater than or equals to 2 so z2 now is x1 plus x2 t which i can write as x2 less than or equals to 2 x1 so you guys have already dealt with such cases right how to find the distribution of this so how you are going to find the distribution of this by using double integrations right you first let this x1 take the values as per distribution and for each possible values then you compute x2 upper bounded by that value as per the distribution of x2 and you have when you do this you will end up with something like the integration of okay basically you will end up with something like 0 to t f of t minus u and d e u i'm just writing this is just like simplification of this which you can basically i can think it as a convolution of a and f process at time t so this is then you can just like you can just think of this as you can write, express it as a convolution of your distributions a and f here now you can repeat this process for any n now you can now think ask the question what is the probability that z n is less than or equals to t so you can work out this i'm just skipping the details it can be thought as a convolution of f and all these processes computed like this Yeah, so this are basically convolution of a and n minus n one times the f functions convolution of this computed at a. Now based on this, now we are ready to kind of find the distribution of m of t. Why is that? I know that probability of z n less than or equals to t is equals to probability that. m of t greater than or equal to n we have already shown these two events are equivalent right so if these two events are the same then the probability be better the same so you see that now we have this now how i am going to use this further information to find so fine i have this distribution so based on this i know just using a and f i will be able to find the distribution of my process m of t now how to count the expected value so we know that this expected value can also be found as probability that so i know that my m n m of t is going to take integer value integer values so this is going to probability that it is going to equals to n equals to 1 to infinity it is correct this also you know right the expectation of a random variable i can expre express it like this so here m of t is taking discrete valued outcomes 
that is why I am just writing a summation. Had it been a continuous value, I had to replace it by integration. Fine, so then I know this. So now going back to this relation and this relation, I have this is nothing but n equals to 1 of a into equals to this. So you just see that just by knowing these two CDFs of my renewal process, I should be able to compute all the statistics of my related process. This Z ions, this M of T's and its mean values, okay. This is equivalent to computing its CDF, right? It is a discrete value, right? CDF should be enough for us. So just use this. You already have what more you want, okay? Okay, fine. So let us conclude with the main result of this part. Just going to state it as a theorem. This is called elementary renewal theorem. Even So it requires three hypotheses. X2. Almost surely here. So what it says is, okay, as usual we are going to take a mutually independent non-negative sequence of random variables, okay, such that they are ID, IID distributed for n greater than or equals to 2. Further, let us say the probability that each of the renewal times being finite is 1, yeah. So 
all my x k's are finite with probability 1 and I am also allowing, but I am allowing this x k to take the value infinity. Okay, so I all I want is this x expectation of x k to be any value, but I want them to be strictly greater than zero. Okay, all these quantities for all k. If this happens. So notice that this expectation of k is they are same for all k when k is greater than or equals to 2. Expectation of x1 could be different from expectation of x2, but expectation of x2, x3 and all others are going to be same. Now it says that the mean number of renewals in the, in, in the interval 0 t as t goes to infinity is 1 by expectation no, x2. So what is m of t? The number of renewals in the interval 0 t. When you are dividing it by t, that means basically mean number of renewals in the interval 0 t. Okay? And you are letting t go to infinity. So when you are going to let that go to infinity, that rate is going to be like 1 upon expectation of x2. Okay, let us try to understand why expectation of x1 is not coming into picture, why only expectation of x2 is coming into picture. Okay. So see that for k greater than or equals to 1, we are assuming that expectation of sorry probability of xk is less than infinity, right. So that means I am going to hit state j, whatever state I start from in some finite time. Right, that is the why it is x of probability of x1 is less than uh, infinity is probability hope happens with probability 1. So at some point I am sure I am going to hit state j and after that I am looking at coming back to the state i j again and again right. And now from state i to some state j I have come done that in the first cycle within some finite time. And after that, I am looking at again coming back to j again and again, right. So, in the, the first cycle has some finite time, but here I am looking at t letting go to infinity. What are the contribution that has happened from initially some state to coming to j for the first time that is going to be vanishing, right? It will not contribute. But what contributes is the sum of the other terms. So, this m of t is going to include all the renewals till time t, right. The first renewal has happened some time, it is going to take some portion, but most of the other time, what happened the other renewals have happened in the other time. So the, contri the time contributes to uh, whatever like this, that uh, the, the, the first time contribution to m of t is going to be very small, right. And now because of that that does not uh, going to affect expectation of x1 is not going to affect this. But why that then the, the thing case that the others is happening at this rate, fine. So in m of t most of the renewals are like second, third, right, like other than first ones. And now all of them are kind of identically distributed, x2, x3, all, all of them. And now when you are going to divide it by t, this is basically you are asking number of re returns to state j over a period of time t. So in a way that has to be inversely proportional to so this you are basically asking on an average how many returns to state j are happening, right? So, so basically you are, okay, if you are going to take uh, some time t and uh, then you are going to divide it by t, so number of renewals by t are basically happening on a, so how much time it took for one renewal to happen. 
So, yeah, one renewal in happening time, you expect it to be inversely proportional to the the expected time of that renewal itself, right? M of t is the number of renewals that have happened in time t. So, what are happening is basically per unit time, how many renewals are happening, right? So, this some number of m of t number of renewals are happened in the interval 0 t, we are dividing it by t. So, then how many renewals are happening per unit time? That is the question you are asking, right? So, we are saying that that number of renewals per unit time is 1 upon expectation of x2, right? If something is happening, so you are repeating. So, x t is basically telling you at what time you are repeating, right? So, if you are repeating very fast, so expectation of x2 is going to be uh, very fast. That means, you are repeating very fast. That means, expectation of x2 is small because you are happening again and again very frequently. If this is small, then you basically going to see lot of renewals in the given interval, right? So, that is why if this expectation is going to be small, you are going to see lot of renewals in a given duration. If this expectation is going to be large, that means the renewals are happening after a long, long time. So, you do not see more number of renewals in a given duration 0 t. So, that is why this number of renewals per unit time is going to be inversely related to the how frequently you are going to observe these renewals, okay. So, and this is almost sure result because these MT are random quantities, right. So, that is why this is random. And now, the last part of it says that if instead of MT you look at its expectation, that is again converging to the same limit. So, you what was our uh, Laugh large number said summation of xi by n it went to mean value, right? Is it necessary that always the average of random quantities has to converge to some random variable? It can converge to a constant, and that is exactly is happening. So, this is exactly saying that the number of renew average number of renewals is a constant, and that constant is given by 1 upon expectation of x2. Okay, so this quantity is nothing, this quantity here is nothing but the expectation of this, but uh, as usual we cannot directly derive this quantity from this because in general we cannot just take expectation of this quantity here because expectation and limits cannot be interchanged. It needs some careful analysis. So, because of the lack of the time what we will do is we will not go into the proof of this, the proof is actually interesting. but. Uh, in the last class, we will just cover one more theorem called renewal reward theorem and uh, just stop it there. Okay.